The more holy worship I give this allegedly unholy medium, the more I think about things I probably shouldn't. To a time of primeval subjection, when the evilest of spirits rose to roam the world. Most call them demons. The faithful call them <laughs> as the premier outlet for fantasy and villains. It's no surprise that video games frequently engage with the greatest granddaddy of them all. And to my long-awaited delight, it's finally time for me to kneel before the summoning circle. Now, the term's gotten a bit broader since the days of whenever God was born, so let's define a demon. Any supernatural being of demonstrably evil alignment or image. That's it. It's the all-encompassing buzzword for dark higher powers that typically don't mix with us. Thankfully, games give a ton more detailed nuance than biblical parchment, so the entries don't have to be definitively evil, primordial, or even spiritual to count, meaning pures and hybrids of both good and evil are allowed. Fantasy ain't so simple, so neither am I. Prep for judgment of the highest order. I can only count to ten. Make it so! They say laughter takes the fear away, so it's only courteous to them that we match the scariest shit ever with the funniest shit ever. It's surprisingly easy to find a being sponge bathed in damned souls trying and succeeding to make us laugh. That's like buying a teddy bear to murder you. But sure, give me that copium. Still stalking, Still stalking me, me, I see. <laughs> You're sent to hell, your sides are the first to go, courtesy of chapters 9 through 25 of Sakurai's Divine Comedy. You know, I've heard of deviled ham, but <coughs> Greek mythology's resident gravekeeper has had the most surprising count of XBs in modern media, and even beyond the roguelike shit fiend of a father of today, and surprisingly, comedy club law school dropout of Renaissance era Disney lies sort of a Perfect in between. Kid Icarus's incarnation of Hades is truly special and delivered much of the punch of this one hit wonder, leveling so much of the strength and spectacle of Greece's great deities with humor that wouldn't be out of place in Golden Era Simpsons. And I guess I never really considered that. When you're so damn powerful to the point of ruling the entire pantheon without anyone ever noticing, why not crunch on the funny bone? Who's gonna be ballsy enough to tell you your jokes suck? Not even your only threat, man. Ow! Oh. Did I beat him? No, I'm, no, fine. I'm fine, but, but I could have sprained my, my ankle, ankle, you know. No. I just love the direction. Hades' power level is still jacked despite the quips, and the playfully dull, smart-ass delivery of every single line stands out hilariously with his truly imposing role as the Greek Satan. It's funny, really. In the original Legends, Hades is kind of just a misunderstood edgelord with a shitty job. Here, I think we understand exactly what he is. Awesome! I'm actually rather proud of you. 8-Bit Pit would have never made it this far. But don't worry, I'm not going to tear up the credits again. The game really is over. Which is why I'm here to delete your save data. One, two, three, gone! No, I'm just messing with you, buddy. Settle down. And damn, I love his design. It's surprisingly monstrous. With a face app ass smile and oh my f Fuck, I hope the Greeks got a god of Manny Petty. Yeah. <laughs> There's no better way to threaten the corporeal and ordinary than reminding them of their bills. Why is that stupid ass piece of paper modern man's greatest arch enemy? Because it always comes back. Good thing uber powered corpses with capes don't get their ideas from paper. That would suck. Uh, uh, uh. Ah! Eh, this is still better. Oh, rule. 
rules, how little you matter to me. Castlevania is extremely weird in the fact that its big ticket villain isn't original, but an adaptation of the most legendary name in all horror. But is Dracula really a demon? In the book and movies, Probably not, just a pimp of the undead, but to beg otherwise straight to a Vaniac's face and yours is gonna get cratered. The equivalent of jacking a toy water gun from Walmart and turning it into a fucking fire hose. Konami basically turned Bram Stoker's literary Hitler into Satan's Alolan form. Video game Dracula is the immortal, ever reincarnating harbinger of darkness, rising from his grave to spread gothic bedlam every single century. I really like what they did here, honing their vision of an established monster's untapped potential while keeping to the same compelling mythos. The already religious crux of the vampire legend does an awful lot to sell this awesome portrayal of the Count. Before, it eh, just a baby hell spawn, like little Nicky, but good. Blech. Now he full on devil daddy. He's powerful as fuck, by the way, with his dominion over the demon realm and the cracked energy of the Crimson Stone. Dracula laps up nearly every supervillain luxury, giant castle, millions of minions, and ridiculous necromantic superpowers granting him mastery in soul absorption and blood magic, allowing the bastard to assume just about any nightmarish form you can fathom. Still don't think he's a demon? I don't think the holy bouncer lets crocodile crotch into heaven, my dude! Whoever said the devil's advocate had to be bribed? Everyone's apparently accepting of a wrathful god, so why not a friendly demon? Is it Satanism to value diversity? Subversion can be quite compelling when done right, especially on beans we default as the most wrong you can get. Dramatic irony is underrated. Badasses and pizza aren't, but I need both stat. Come on up, Dante! <laughs> What the hell is this? Is yo time to shine, son? I always find it extra compelling when fantasy meets humanity. Like, what if this cool, awesome thing that doesn't exist was slapped onto your dude bro down the hall? You get some good game, bruh. Fuck you. Fuck you! I didn't order that kind of Sparta, but thanks. The legendary son of Capcom Sparta. Dante stands as my personal favorite human demon hybrid. Honestly, ever. I mean, just look at him. Taking all the spectacle and intensity of the biblical monster and molding it around a goaded Chad. I really like Dante's character. He plays things suave and chill despite technically being an orphan hellspawn, using his powers from hell and the Deadpool school of killing things really cool to destroy the species that killed his mom and corrupted his brother. Combining the dramatic appeal of Castlevania's Alucard with the dual world conflict and down-to-earth likability of something like Danny Phantom, which is a gigantic compliment by the way, refreshing to see something so widely maligned actually be a definitively good entity. I'll remind you, it's a good thing he's on our side. God! At this point, I'm more concerned with the sword safety. Guess that's just a day in the life of a handsome devil. Well, a good day. Ow! I'm not one to put myself over almighty beans, but maybe David wouldn't land match Goliath if Goliath didn't give him a damn. Seriously, why play with us little bitches when you're so almighty? It's cause we're fun, isn't it? You don't really hate us. You're just bored and want our attention. Satan, the original Sundari. <laughs> Oh, hell yeah! I love games that aren't scared to arm wrestle blasphemy. All it takes is a refusal to kill unarmed innocents and a single day of holy boot camp for a mere man to rise over the impassable, the immortal king of FPSs. Doom 
inspired this whole damn list. And we all know why. It's diversity and demonic debauchery is without any match, swarming us with hordes of the most iconic hellspawn in gaming, and still proving as formidable as damp toilet paper to our boy Doom Guy. From fodder to heavy to super heavy, the fiends he unmade along the way are literally ungodly lovable chunks of edge meat. Classics like the Caco Demon, Imps, and Barons from Hell make fantastic use of the medieval death metal album cover flavor, barbecuing every battle with top quality fire and brimstone. Meanwhile, younger recruits like the Arachnatron, Cyber Mancubus, and the infamous Marauders merge eternal pools of argent energy with robotic enhancements and even human caliber combat intelligence. They literally dive to hell and back with the concept. And assured all that fleshing out came off the bones of mortals. The Doomans are so fun, beyond just being kibbles and bits for your monster shotgun, for making a wildly varied armada out of what so many assume to be a predictable species. Sure, yeah, they're evil and red and don't floss, but let me tell you, if the Bible had demons this metal in it, way more people would read it. The scariest things in the world are those which weren't designed and balanced for the world. Demons and all that they bring symbolize the worst of invasive menace. Which is why, even despite the very best nuance, they lend themselves so flawlessly to horror. It's one giant, WHY IS THIS HERE? I CAN'T RESPOND! I NEED GOD! Woohoo! Alright, I'm set. <laughs> I need seven shiny things. Mario, buddy, I get you're a brave hero, but how brave are we talking here? One of the most nebulous anomalies of the entire Jumpman lineage. Paper Mario 2's Big Bad is so unbelievably off-brand. It borders on self-destruction, an untimely deluge of darkness befalling a millennium-age port town, instantly cracked as cataclysmic lightning, blasting down a monarchy born of ceaseless shadow, a queen to rule the world, trapping the heavens into crystalline gems, and manifesting both children and dragons to upkeep her rule, should the light ever bury her. That it did. A heroic tetrad of Toad, Goomba, Koopa, and Boo wielded the holy jewels against her, destroying the physical form and sealing the soulless soul behind the giant door to her accursed tomb. Repeat after me. Mario Lore! And it's in this glorified reprint of the exact same book where the thousand year demon flexes all manners of depravity. The Shadow Queen is so cruel, so unimpressed by mortality. I'm legitimately amazed she chooses to talk to us, subjecting so many to mood whiplash at best with frighteningly casual murder, enslavement, and E-rated EXORCIST REFERENCE. The possession of Peach in particular disturbs the deadlights out of me forcing us to hurt her and expecting eternal subjection veiling as the one who leads with love. Who the fuck hurt you? all code for many a biblical bad is making you something you're not. Intensity breeding insanity. Influence of the body beyond all belief. Nothing is more shocking. Wanna bet money on that? Sonic Unleashed's agenda for redefining the term speed demon went so far as to endanger a priceless image. All for an artistic whammy. Dark Gaia is something so astonishing for the House of Hedgehog to even attempt. Born of Earth's primeval twilight, this draconian colossus serves as the planet's natural demise. Inevitable omnipotent death 
by the seething embrace of necroplasmic tendrils and supreme spiritual fiend of Sonic the Hedgehog. No, 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 fuck out of here, egghead. There's no way American Speedy Gonzales has anything to do with emo Godzilla. They ruined my character. You clearly don't know your character, pal. Beyond looking unbelievably amazing, this pending Yu-Gi-Oh lawsuit ties to the universe's blue star in a way that legitimately builds on the character. Through his flawless synergy with all seven emeralds and tireless kinetic beings, Sonic's a purified embodiment of chaos. Well, what is darkness but chaos unseen? The fact that Dark Gaia naturally links back to the Chaos Emeralds and Earth all the same, and how even the demonic influence it puts the nocturnal world under is nothing more than a caffeine withdrawal headache to Sonic raises a flag of another color. Could this be Sonic's one true fear? Falling to his own chaos, losing control, becoming the dark, the night, the destruction, fated to destroy the planet. Is that why the entity chose him? If not for friends making life worth keeping, what would that new, suspiciously comfortable dark power make him do? Yeah, furry Stretch Armstrong's origin, Wolfman's got lore! How does it sound so stupid, yet feel so brilliant? Speaking as something of an agnostic, I often wonder just how much the evil we even witness. Is it really a lot, or are we being drip fed? Impossible to say considering how well it hides, as we snuff out the perhaps intentionally distracting sinners, could the Dark Lord be living calm in plain sight? What is its true form, and how blind have we been? It's a fish. It's a fish! I knew it! I knew the bottom of the sea was the portal to hell! Hogging all the goddamn symbolism today is Yami from Okami, or Akuro for those who played the obscure sequel. Look, it don't matter, it's the same entity. So the true identity goes to the cooler name and better game. Ray! Ayo hey, Japan, I thought you liked fish! Imagine saying I eat the lord of all darkness on the regular. This game has simultaneously one of the coolest and strangest interpretations of God's psycho stalker I've ever seen. Brutally powerful and disturbingly silent. This satanic sushi and his terrifyingly adaptive God Slayer Mecha is the progenitor of all the malice and destruction to befall Nippon, Kamui, and the celestial plane stringing along an entire legion of tyrannical demons from the shadows, cavorting abound with venomous chaos as the hours approach the day of darkness, where he stands to completely snuff out the universe's guardian sun with no quarter. While Yami's true stage presence is laughable, he's a literal last minute villain, it's his intense energy that makes him truly memorable. The fucking thing is so quiet, so unrelatably savage and primitive, you believe you felt him many times before in every beast you've bested. And of course, the symbols of all Five of his forms representing the evils of man, destruction of land, the death of nature, gambling with all your humanity, and technological domination by their own hand. Yeah, even the Pope's calling off sick reading that. All evil starts small. Pray to the heavens you don't find it too late. The why is infinitely more scary than the what. And given the what is an eldritch ectoplasmic centipede, maybe the truth's best kept a lie. Giratina is concerning. While not as terrifying as Eternatus, or as mystic as Deoxys, specimen 487 of the Pokedex is 
clearly 179 units off count. Sinnoh wasn't subtle at all with most of its legends. A creation deity given its first three born nebulous duties of upholding divine forces. Dialga and Palkia, deities of time and space in vital harmony with the natural world. Then there's the other one. Giratina, deity of antimatter. You know, all negative energy looks like daddy had a favorite, or did he? Anyone else creeped out? Giratina is so estranged from the universe, existent only in its own personalized plane of existence, where everything is distorted with its own alternate form? Why is this one so suspiciously special? It's almost like Arceus is scared of it. And we should be. Read that damn Pokedex. It was banished for its violence. It silently gazed upon the old world from the distortion world. Okay, so you're gonna have to tell me. In a world where vengeful toys conspire child murder, jellyfish wreck and drown inhabited ships, and birds of oblivion routinely genocide all life, what's a crime so terrible you have to magically lock them away? What did Giratina do to scare Arceus so damn much that he disowned what's clearly his Firstborn origin form? Sneaky. Considering the nauseating surplus of symbolism, there are sixes everywhere! This thing's scaly Lucifer! And the confirmed real world basis on the scientific theory of universal negative energy. Giratina could very well be as strong as Arceus, like Satan is to God in some perspectives. Was Giratina even intentional? You know, all these evil, destructive Pokemon, all these new uber aliens invading the world, maybe Mr. Goat God didn't make them. Maybe they were invited by something else. What you gonna do, old man? Stop me. <laughs>
that this is the exact same being. Every time. A reminder that evil never dies. Never changes. Only the darkest of evil hides in the brightest places. And for ages, the reigning symbol of innocence played terrified hosts to such the gaming world can barely grasp. Everybody knows that Kirby's got some fucked up highlights, nightmarish, out of place monsters, and a growing magnitude of cosmic supernatural evil with every release. All peaking with the launch of Star Allies, where the worst of suspicions are confirmed through the words of a deadass devil worshipping cult, did echo a frighteningly familiar omnipotence, an everlasting god existent in all dimensions in different forms, born of dark dream, soul, and heart, inspiring and influencing all who meets its eye. Religiously known as Void, this forsaken force carries so many symbols and holds so many answers to the franchise. It's amazing next to none of you saw this coming. Also known as Dark Matter, Every demonic quality each of the previous contenders had is loud and present in this cycloptic chimera of chaos. Except for being funny, cause this shit is no joke. The harrowing mystery behind its complete origin and true power. It's scary inability to die for good. The sheer volume of its alternate forms and reincarnations. The dis disturbing influence it invokes even close friends with, the shocking and grotesque way it deforms itself and its puppets, even changing how you feel about the main character. Void has about a dozen official or incredibly telling alternate forms across the franchise from his native incarnation alone, from Zero Two to Dark Mind to Miracle Matter. But as those who worship him will tell you, there ain't just one dimension. There's billions in theory. So who's to say we don't play as one of his forms? Could that be why Kirby kills with a smile? Is this fucking thing just trying to conjoin with all of his interdimensional forms? His friends? And why are so many of the inventions of those ancients we never see imbued with all the same power and symbols? Holy fucking shit! Dark Matter is so compelling in all facets of its design and turns the equally compelling intensity of the demon into that of a cosmic essence. God damn man, it even has its own canonical religion! It's the dark, dream, heart, and soul of this franchise. This is being Fuffles Minion. Open thine eye to all that matters. And now, give it up for the high tier patrons. A4X Guy, Akuma Kuma, Alex S. Warrior, Alfredo Jones, and Tasma Akumu, Arctic Kaiju, Azazel the Undying, BF Rio, Beast Gamer, Burn 100B, Chibi Emiko, Cortamanch 437, Dark Lord Bloody Soul, Diamond Ice, Double N, Eddie Toxpin, Elines Hayasi, Emerald Dash 192, Emily Infinite, Falk you, Fencer de Rio, Flame Chocobo, GamerFan64, Goldsbro, TSG, Hero for Life, Ignitalist Gaming, Jake the Snake Arnstom, Jobot.11, Josie Bear, Justin Bellavo, JW Goji Fan, K Dog, Kirby484, Nightmare Steel, Kyle Wee21, Love, Lucario Smash 246, Luke Johnston, Maze Arcana, Mailman 019, Masao, Mathtron 5000, Matthew Smith, Morgan Arvite, Nathaniel Sterling, Panther J, 
Patrick Sandlin, Peter Shepard, put 9 volt in Smash Bros, please. Renaku, Lord of Shadow, Roberto Del Fuego, Shining Sil Valley 777, Shiro THR, Skellington 977, Spencer Studios, The Gag Reflex, The Ultimate Sora, Thomas Drury, Tubazo 1989, Zay Zandler, Egg Zayox, Zack Attacker, Turtle the Sea Wing, The Digital Nugget, Mecha Max, The Ultimate Sora, Alpha Red, Anna Rolos, Daniel Nance, Kairu Shinobi, Konaru, Luigi the Waddle Dee, Munchrai, Nova Strife, Philip Cross, Anthony Lucero, Augie and Panachu, Crunchy Boy, Dr. Dark 7, Mitchell Roberts, Midnight Matter, and Shade 2800. May we meet again! <laughs>